<sighs> Here we go. Hey there, guys. My name is Joth Saiyan, and welcome to another video today, guys. So, in today's video, I've been wanting to make this video for a while because this is my review for Kakarot. The reason why I haven't been up, I really haven't uploaded this video yet because I really want to give you guys my honest opinion, my honest thought about this game truly. And I, to be honest with you guys, today is what well, Thursday. I've been making this video a lot. I keep redoing this video because there's a lot I have to say and there's a lot that needs to be said. I know a lot of people may get angry with some of this stuff I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway because I don't want to be that kind of hypocrite guy that just, you know, fake like the game and just give you guys fake um, immersion and just be like, oh, the game is great, the game is amazing, and oh, the game is bad, you know, you don't get it. This game is great for what it is, but anyway. In this video, the first thing first, I just want to give you guys my pros for the game, some of the good, good stuff before I get to the bad, because I really want to get all the good stuff out of the way before I start talking bad about the game, you know. But anyway, let's begin. So, as we all know, this game is heavily based off nostalgic feels, because we know this game is fully telling the story of Dragon Ball Z, or the story of Goku, throughout Dragon Ball Z. We all knew what to expect from this game. And we all got what we were somewhat got what we were expecting to see in this game. As we all know, this game also took a lot from the manga, not just the anime. This game took a lot more from the manga than the anime also, but you know, it took a little bit for both from each. But one of the best things about this game is the fact that it really knows how to catch a nostalgic feeling and also give us something that we haven't really gotten for a while in a Dragon Ball game, and that is open world. I think the first op main open world Dragon Ball game we got, and I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but was for me was Legacy of Goku and Boost Fury. Even though this game was only made for the Game Boy and the handheld um, device, those games was legendary back in the day. You know, we all loved the nostalgic feel that game gave us, the music and everything in those games was amazing. And Kakarot somewhat got that too, you know. Like I've always been saying for a while, this game is pretty much Legacy of Goku and Boost Fury on console. Even though a lot of people don't want to admit it, that's what it is, that's the truth. This game is legit those games but on console with just a different name. But I think one like I was saying, one of the best thing about this game is the fact that it gives us something that I haven't gone like that is the open world feel. When you first open this game and start flying around on the Nimbus cloud with characters in your team like Piccolo for example and Goku and all those characters going to find um, riders is one of the best feeling like I say you have some more of a freedom to fly around the world of Dragon Ball even though the game is not fully open world it still have that open world vibe that open world feeling that can make you feel like you know you actually part of the universe which is one of the best thing and one of the coolest thing I know a lot of people like and some people do hate but I will get into the hate part later, but some people like this, the fact that the combat system in this game is very simple, but it's very nice. It's the fact that you only press one button to do all the combos, which is um, circle, if I'm not wrong, even though the bad part is you can't really change the controls in this game, but it doesn't really matter. The fact is, the control in this game is very simple and very nice, so it's not too hard for newcomers to adapt to the fighting system in this game. The fighting system in this game is very different from Xenoverse, even though a lot of people like to say it's similar to Xenoverse, it's really not. This game is very different in its own right, and I like that. A lot of people like what it is. You know, when I first got this game, it was a bit difficult for me to get used to because I was not too familiar with the controls, even though I've been playing Xenoverse and other games for a while. It's really different from what this game is, but I appreciate what this game is. The story mode is very clean, very smooth, and the fighting system is very nice. Even doing super attack and having a chance to fight a game boss fight. The boss battle in this game is very different from Xenoverse, if all those guys are wondering. It looks similar, but very, very different. It's very simple, I can tell you that. It's very simple compared to Xenoverse, but it's very nice. It makes you feel like you're part of the anime. That's one of the best things. Like I said, flying over the Nimbus Cloud is awesome. Even seeing Super Attack in this game, how beautiful it looks. This game is an amazing game in so many ways, but it has so many problems. You know, that's one of the few things why I'm giving you guys my honest review. This game is amazing. Some of the cuts in this game is beautifully told. I mean, I'm not too surprised. This is a CC2 game, and they are known for making such beautiful cutscene. If you guys don't know yet, play the Naruto Storm series, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I love this game for what it is, but moving on to the cons. This game has so many um so many problems, but I'm just going to give you guys the problem I've noticed, the problem I've seen. And one of those few problems is the fact that I've been talking about this for a while on the channel. 
and that got to do with um, some of the stuff that we did see in the manga and the anime. This game skipped over that. Even though this game, going to this game, there was so many hype, so much hype. But what went wrong? Well, the developer kind of killed a lot of our expectation, and they didn't do this game justice with the fact that before this game came out, they've been releasing a lot of cutscenes, a lot of scenes that you know part of the story they've been pre-releasing that like short clips of it on youtube people have been uploading it including myself i'm i'm guilty of that but the developer banam namco and cc2 has been dropping cool little short clips gameplay of this game before the game even came out been spoiling the gameplay for a lot of people even though a lot of us knew what this game is a lot of us knew what the story more is but still that kind of killed the vibe of the game you know but some of the few negatives also to have for this game is the fact that a lot of the legendary scene i.e super vegeta versus you know um perfect cell with the final flash that is not in the game oh yeah were you expecting grade three super trunks against perfect cell that's not in the game also you know all those stuff are very very bad a very negative part of the game and honestly i don't know why they did that i don't know if they were trying to save money or you know all that sort of stuff but if you guys gonna build up the nostalgia feeling on like especially the fact that you're saying this game is just like the anime turn return the anime all that stuff give us something that we all want to see give us something that we all knew should have been in this game but unfortunately you guys did not add it like i said i.e the final flash cutscene or even the grade three future trunks and also guys we guys are expecting to play as those character if you beat the game and use those transformation in the game it is not in the game it's only part of the story mode and i think going back to what's up i wanted to mention in the pros um one of the best thing about this game also is the fact that well after you beat the cell saga the three years time scheme they really did, did tell that part very beautifully especially the fact that they get to build on the development of other characters we get to see other characters out throughout the three years time scheme for example what vegeta and those other characters up to we even get to see a quick uh quick fight scene between vegeta and team gohan you know when gohan went to visit vegeta um in boma you know in, in wet city he began to fight against vegeta that was one of the best thing also because we didn't really get to see that in three year time skip in the anime i'm pretty sure it was not in the manga also but that was one of the best thing but anyway moving, going back to the cons now like i said talking about all this stuff one of the biggest things too i've been talking about before this game came out when we've been seeing all the gameplay and that got to do with the key charge now as you know when character transform into super Saiyan or whatever transformation the key should be yellow but unfortunately it is blue i don't know why and one of the biggest thing too that when it comes to combat also that i noticed in this game the combat in this game sucks because the develop uh, the, the fighting the ai or computers or the cpu in this game it is very difficult and very very annoying you know what not so much difficult but just annoying i know a lot of you guys will be saying that the um the difficulty in this game is fine yes it's fine at a certain point but it is very frustrating and very annoying it is not difficult at all to my in my opinion it's just annoying if you guys i'm let me ask you guys this question if any of you guys have played through the story more in the angel saga if you fought against angel 20 and 19 if you guys tell me none of you guys feel that battle for the first time or end up losing that battle the first time i would not believe you everybody that played that story more played that part has lost all somewhat being defeated by angel 20 with the fact that the computers in this game just spam do not punch, they don't do anything with punchings or kicking they, they suck at it the only thing they're good at is spamming because this game is known for the character to spam you can spam spam as much as possible in this game now i got no problem that we all do it to level up fast but when it comes to playing the story mode the cpu that's all they do just spam and the, the developer thing that making the game difficult but it's really not it's just making the game very frustrating and very annoying to play you know when the cpu keeps spamming especially the fact that you're trying to do combos on the cpu or on a boss fight what they would do they would glow red have this glow red aura around the body charging up some bullshit attack and just knocking you out of your combos and just not kicking you away that is so unfair it does not make any sense at all and it really is ridiculous i know a lot of people i've been talking to myself have problems with that it doesn't make any sense i get it they meant to make the boss fight hard that makes sense i get that but with the fact that a lot of your attack that you should be landing does not land because the boss is charging up this bullshit key charge attack, whatever it is and knock you back while they were glowing red make zero sense and the fact that they keep spamming some beam attack without even doing anything 
it hurts it's annoying that's one of the biggest problem i have with this game also too like i said this game is was meant to have a lot of expectation to go with it especially how much hype that was around this game how much the developer built up that hype around this game and we end up playing the game that hype kind of dies down it kind of kills your vibe and that really did kill my vibe because a lot of stuff i expect to see in this game was not in this game and we all know this game is gonna have dlc but let me guys tell you this if the dlc is over 30 this game should the dlc should be a completely new game because that's what's gonna happen i mean this is a Bandam Namco developer game after all. I mean, even though CC2 is the developer for the game, but this is a Bandam Namco promoter game. So this is Bandam Namco game after all. We know those guys are luxurious or, you know, lashing on and bumping up the price for DLC. Look at Xenoverse, for example. That game right now is only surviving on DLC. And if this game had DLC, I already imagine the price going up to like $30 for Dragon Ball Super Pack or something ridiculous like that. And that's completely stupid. It's not fair. It makes zero sense because I won't even be surprised with some of the stuff that we should see in this game be added as DLC. For example, IE, Super Vegeta, and Super or level grade 3 trunks. Because a lot of people already complaining about it. They'll probably be like, you know what? People already complaining about it. It was not in the game. We didn't put it in the game. Why not make a DLC? Just to get their money and just tell them to shut up. Even though this dude, even though some of those things should already be in the game. But I'm guessing they're gonna add as DLC. I mean, they did it for Xenoverse after all, so I'm be too surprised if they did it for you know for Kakarot. But you know, these are all the problems I have for this game. There's more I could be forgetting, but these are the one that I, I that I have encountered, and it's very frustrating. And not not only that too. Like for example, if you free roaming, if you just mind your own business, doing other things, you have these random enemies just keep following you around encounter you in ridiculous dumb battles it make no sense it's annoying make those things stop and try to make the game a lot easier and the freedom that we all expect to see in this game is not really much of a freedom and a lot of us expect this game to have some more of character customization for example i'm not i don't mean changing the character's outfit color but changing the design of the app for example i.e when gohan were on the spring car planet those outfit he was wearing the spring car outfit that's only through story mode for example when goku came back from yadra that outfit was only through our story mode you know what i mean like great Sam and gohan that's only story mode we don't get to change in this outfit after we beat the game you expect to see that knowing the fact this game is an our quote-unquote rpg game you know we expect to see stuff like that but instead this game leaves us to a lot of disappointment and a lot of angry angry fans a lot of people complaining a lot of kill expectation a lot of shitty hype that was going to this game this game really did kill my vibe i i still like the game for what it is i appreciate it but at the end of the day this game is this game did high high expectation but poorly 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 execution that's what i can say but that's just my opinion guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video this is my honest review i apologize for this being, video being too long but i really had to get this out that, I know a lot of you guys may be angry with what I'm saying. A lot of you guys may be calling me a hypocrite. But this is all the stuff I went through in this game. This is all I experienced throughout the game. I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree with me. But there could be a lot of stuff I'm missing. But these are some of the stuff that I, I could think of that throughout playing this game. But anyway, I'm still playing this game for what it is. Because I, I did pay for it. But when DLC come out, when more news come out, I will be uploading on the channel. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, my name is Justin. Please have an amazing day. I'll see you later, guys. Peace out.